Hello everyone, my name is Neil Robson and this is a short demonstration of my final project for Computer Science 562 uh, Real-Time Graphics. So for my project I decided to uh, try and render a three-dimensional fractal uh, and the results or one of the initial results you can see here uh, in front of you on the screen. Uh, this is a mandel bulb which is uh, sort of a 3D version of the two-dimensional Mandelbrot set fractal that uh, is commonly known and loved throughout the mathematical community. Um, as you can see, you can move around this in uh, real time using uh, basic keyboard controls. Right now, this uh, particular uh, sort of faded red coloring that you're seeing here is uh, one of my early results when I was working on rendering. Uh, it is demonstrating or it is uh, uh, representing how difficult it is for a given ray to um, path trace or path march its way to a point of intersection with the fractal. So as we can see down here on the bottom center, it's a uh, pretty dark red, which means that it was very easy for uh, the fragment shader to figure out the point of intersection there. Um, but out here in the center in this instance, you can see it's white and yellow, which means it was very difficult for uh, the fragment shader to uh, send a ray all the way through um, that uh, the, the crevice and hit that uh, further away section of the mandible. And so if I move forward a little bit, you can see how it turns nice and red as it becomes easier for the fragment shader to move around. Okay. Um, so that was just the initial result. I wanted to get some more, uh, some prettier lighting. And so uh, to do so, I went ahead and uh, implemented a basic uh, uh, ray tracing global illumination technique. Uh, right now, once again, it's kind of faded out. Uh, let me go ahead and um, make it a little bit darker for us to see here. Turn off gamma correction. And we'll go and turn off direct lighting as well. So right now, uh, this is the uh, mandel bulb with uh, no sun, no spotlight in the background. All it's doing is reflecting uh, the gradient that's behind it, the world. So as you can see down here at the bottom, it's a uh, pretty dark purple. Um, and up at the top, it's closer to a pink or magenta. We can change that around a little bit just for uh, the sake of demonstration. Let's see if we can do kind of a Christmassy color. Um, well, this is more of a Halloween than a Christmas, but you can see here how um, there are uh, ambient uh, shadows, um, just like before, um, but in this case, they're not being rendered by how complex it is or how difficult it is for the uh, a given ray to hit the mandel bulb, but rendered rather um, by bouncing around and, and seeing if a ray escapes from the mandel bulb and hits our uh, background skybox. So you see kind of red on the top, um, green on the bottom based on the background. Um, in addition, uh, as you saw a second ago, I do have uh, direct lighting. In this case, the light is very, very bright um, just to show the way um, the shadows work here. So you can see, let me zoom in just a little bit. Um, so uh, you can see how uh, the light right now is um, sort of behind our head and shining down at the mandel bulb. Uh, I can rotate it around using our uh, theta value here. And so now it's uh, on our right hand side. Again, you can see how the shadows uh, move around and change based on where our sun is. Um, if I move it in the back here, you can actually see our sun or our spotlight. Um, I can make it rise up to the sky um, or go down to the horizon, like so. I can also change how intense the light is. So if I bring up the light intensity quite a bit, you can see, well, it already was quite bright, but I'll bring it around to the front and makes everything very, very washed out, which isn't very nice. But if I bring the intensity down, 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 you see it becomes a lot more uh, reasonable. Um, at around 0 0.5, and we can move around once again and kind of see the effect that this very dull light has. Okay, and then the final thing I wanted to do was, um, rather than having arbitrary colors in the background, I really wanted to have a realistic sky and atmosphere model 
again, just to make this uh, mandel bulb look as realistic and beautiful as possible. So I went ahead and I implemented that as well. Um, and this is where the gamma correction that I was messing with earlier is really useful. Brightens things up a good bit. Okay. Um, so once again, we have our sun. I'll go ahead and bring our sun back into a location we can see it. So right now it's in the background. Um, but in this case, uh, the uh, both the atmosphere, the sky, the, the sky box, and the mandible itself is lit based on the sun's position in the sky and how it interacts with the atmosphere. So if I were to bring the sun all the way down to the horizon, you see how we get this very nice Lion King look of the sunrise and the mandible itself is very dark. Bring the sun up, and it's middle of the day. Mandible is nice and lit, bright blue sky. Bring it down behind us for a sunset, and you can see the light starts turning yellow once again as our um, as our sun sets, and we get you know the nice yellow shading on the the mandible, and finally it becomes dark once again. And of course, we can also, well, if I get it right at a sunrise, we can move the light around in a way that's very unnatural for the sun, but again, produces some cool effects on our mandible. Um, that's just about everything. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time here. Um, we'd love to have you come and, and play around with this model for yourself and uh, just see what kind of nice pictures you can generate. Um, and that being said, uh, that is my my graphics project. So thank you very, very much for watching.